again to the 80s. Today I would like to show you how we did things on the Atari 8-bit and first of all with what we did it. The Atari 8-bit comes with a build-in Atari BASIC programming language which is actually not that bad and also not that fast. It's not as bad as a C64 but that's another story. And um, the most powerful thing that we had in the 80s was a programming language that's originally published as a type-in listing in the Happy Computer magazine. And I will load it now. The name of the programming language is Turbo Basic and it was created in 1985 by Frank Ostrowski. Frank Ostrowski later on went to create GFA Basic on the Atari ST and yeah, created basically one of the two most popular programming languages in the Atari computer line. Unfortunately Frank passed away some years ago and uh, also the source code for Atari Turbo Basic which is very powerful because it, for example, contains built-in DOS programs, uh, DOS commands, so you don't need to load a separate DOS and so on. It is several factors faster than Atari BASIC and it comes with a compiler, so you can compile your BASIC program and ship it as a single executable. Um, well, they were so powerful that it actually a lot of number of uh, commercial programs were actually recreated and released with Turbo BASIC. Our member Roland Wassenberg from the Atari Bitbyter User Club spent several years trying to find the sources for Turbo Basic and ultimately we had to conclude that they are never going to be found. But fortunately some other people had created their own versions of Turbo Basic, partly on the original source, partly on decompiled sources and I would like to show you today is how Frank Ostrowski worked back then when he created Turbo Basic for the Atari on the Atari. Turbo Basic was created in uh, assembly language. The assembler used is Bibo Assembler and the DOS used was Bibo DOS. So I switch now to a different drive. Unfortunately, I don't have an expanded drive, so I have to use. SPQT and now I'm in BiboDOS. I booted a 360 kilobyte double density disk which contains all the sources. The sources means 15 files containing 185 kilobytes of source code amounting to around 9100 lines of code. As you can maybe see from the text on the screen. This is a German DOS. We had a strong professional commercial German software infrastructure or shops here in Germany and the uh, Royce company also known as CompuShop they created several professional software products like DOSes, uh, hardware extensions and in particular also an assembler. So if I press 1 I see what is in drive 1 and in drive 1 we see a, the two DOS files, we see BiboS.com, which is the assembler, we see TurboIn, which is the main program, and we see 15 includes. Also on the disk there is a readme that describes how to build um, it on your own, uh, which was created by me. In drive 2 there is a normal uh, medium density disk which contains the Turbo.com uh, program, which is already what we are going to have, so I delete that first. Oh, I always fail if I'm in a German DOS. Let's try again. I pressed the wrong key because it's of course J for Ja and not Yes for Y for yes.
All disk access is running with normal speed, so 19,200 baud. So you get an idea of how it really was. So looking at drive 2, Turbo Basic is gone now. Looking at drive 1 again, there is the Bebo assembler and the Turbo in. So I load the Bebo assembler. I load the main source file. When you list it, you see it contains of a command to tell uh, the assembler to put the output file on drive 2 as turbo.com and then there are 15 include files. I start the assembly process. It, contains two, uh, it consists of two passes. In the first pass, um, all the source files are loaded, compiled, and here you see the output to the different addresses in the memory that they are going to have, but still all label references and so on are not resolved. So there is going to be a second pass where the actual labels are filled in here. And currently this is all compiled into memory. So it's loading the sources and compiling while pass one into memory. Uh, you see also there are several code sections followed by init ADR sections. So these 2E2 to 2E3 means something is loading later on and then there is an initialization called. Turbo Basic is using the ROM under the RAM. That's why you see it's compiling now also areas like COO which are under the OS and um, yeah, it basically has its own loader that first copies everything into RAM and then uh, copies the rest under the OS. By using the RAM under the OS on the 65K machines, it was possible to have a much more powerful and larger um, BASIC, but still have more BASIC RAM available for the programmer. Yeah, now this is the second part under the OS, which is the math pack D8 to DF with uh, improved speeded up um, mathematical routines. And now we come to the core, which is in the area of E4 after the character set till the end of the RAM. Okay, and I was afraid this is going to be the most boring video in my series because I actually don't know how long it really will take. I knew it would take long. And you have to make yourself aware that this, what we do now, is what the programmer had to do whenever he had changed a single line of code and he wanted to test the result. So nothing comparable to today's turnaround times that you get with modern uh, cross-development tools or you had back in the 80s if you had a DAC or VAX. Now we see the pass 2 is starting, it's now running through the same source file again and now we see that there is Turbo Basic Tile 1, Turbo Basic Part 1, um, Turbo Basic Part 2 and now all these include files are read again and from the different noise you hear, you can see that here, can hear that it's reading and then it is writing the results. So now it is writing the actual binary, so binary file to drive 2. Yeah. And I had the idea for this video when I actually tried to compile the available sources for myself and I kept on pressing F1 in Altera to speed it up and still it took forever and I said oh man how long would it have taken on the real hardware and this is my test <laughs> I'm really interested to see how long it does take
So this was part 8 of 15, so we have more than the half now. We're approaching the end. Okay, we are back in the edit mode. What I do now is I swap the disks. I swap the source disk and the output disk. So the output disk becomes drive one. And then I power on the machine again. Now it is booting DOS 2.5. You see the familiar menu. And when we look at the directory, we see there is turbo.com with 144 single density sectors. And we can load it. As I mentioned, this is not the fully original version, it's a slightly improved version. That's why you see a slightly different screen. And the author called it 2.0. There never officially was a 2.0. It's 1.5 with a number of bug fixes. And there we are. We created from the sources our own working Turbo Basic. And if you Go to Atari H, you can follow the thread where yeah, people work on the sources, try to fix bugs, add new features, and yeah, I hope you gave you an idea how it was in the 80s. See you!